Hi, I'm Tim, the Woodworking Maniac, and today I'm outside. And the reason for that is I built these obstacles. Uh, I built them for my son. He had a birthday party a couple weeks ago, and we actually planned on having an outdoor birthday party obstacle course for his, for his actual birthday party. However, on the day of his birthday party, it was really, really cold and raining the entire week beforehand. So it kind of canceled the plans to have that all outdoors. We ended up having to bring it all indoor and, and set it up in our church gym. He still had a blast and all that, but it didn't end up being in our backyard. So uh, he, I asked him about a month ago what he wanted to do for his birthday party. I was expecting him to say, you know, Chuck E. Cheese or something like that. No, he decided to say, I want an, I want an obstacle course. I guess because I've been doing some Tough Mudder obstacle courses and things like that, it really struck up some interest in them. So I figured, you know what? Sure, I could build that. Let's go for it. So I built a few, a few different obstacles and I planned on a few more obstacles that was actually gonna be uh, some ground obstacles that you'd have to crawl under and things like that. But because it was so wet and all that, I ended up not laying those out. But I built quite a few different obstacles here. Let me show you how I built them. Check it out. So I picked up all the supplies for this at the Home Depot, and uh, as you can see, my roof racks are a little overloaded, but it handled it just fine. Pretty much everything for the A-frame is based on a 30 degree angle, so I set my miter saw to 30 degrees and started making some cuts. But my camera died, so I didn't really get any of that footage, but you didn't really miss out on anything. I took my table saw insert plate and put in an old table saw blade, this way I wouldn't uh, gum up my good table saw blade and actually get a bunch of gunk all over my insert plate with using this treated lumber. Here I'm actually making some half lap joints for the top of the A-frame and to do that I actually just cut a bunch of slots and actually busted it apart using a screwdriver and then I'm cleaning it up with a chisel and a hand plane. Now with one of those done I can set up my fence to be used as a reference point and I'm using a quarter inch piece of MDF to actually give me a little bit of a gap between the fence, but I can still use it as a reference point. This way I can actually use the MDF to put in there uh, and take it away. This way I'm not pinching in between the fence using the miter gauge. And then I do the same thing for the other cut that I'm setting up here for the center cut. And uh, I'm actually just setting this up uh, for the uh, center supports going across the A-frame. And this is where those center supports will actually end up going in. Now I need to cut those center supports. Once again, back to the miter saw. And a whole lot of cuts. And once I make this first cut, I can actually use the, uh, uh, the first one that I cut to just mark off and duplicate. I also cut a couple four foot long strips and I'm cutting them in half and these will end up being the climbing strips that'll go on the plywood. Uh, actually climb the wall. My shop's still currently a mess and I don't really have enough floor space to actually make this cut in my shop so I did this out in my driveway. And now on to assembly. I started with the A-frames and I'm using some 3 8 three, three and a half inch long 3 8 inch lag bolts and I'm using some washers along with those. And uh, they went. It, this all went together very easily so just line everything up and just start bolting it all together. And the strips that I put in for the actual climbing wall. I line them up on each side, put a couple screws in, and then I put a whole bunch of screws along the uh, length of it there. Then screwed the wall to the actual A-frame and I made sure to screw only on that board. This way I can actually disassemble it and take the two sides apart if I need to. And I used a hand plane to actually soften up the top edge because it was actually kind of a sharp edge and I, I smoothed it out to where anybody that takes their hand across there they won't actually uh, feel any rough edges or anything. And a quick test and it held my weight just fine. Making the hurdle wall started off on the miter saw and making a whole lot of cuts. Uh, cut all the lumber and got it all to length and got it pretty much everything was cut at the miter saw and then uh, I was ready to move on to the table saw from here.
Here I'm actually creating a half lap that'll actually also match up with the footer. And this will end up creating a really strong joint and will really make a good structure for this wall. For this one I actually pre-drilled the holes, mainly just to uh, line it up. For my corner braces I basically set up a little stop block here with a 45 for it to set up on. And I used a Forstner bit to cut down a spot for the bolt with the washer to fit in. And assembly couldn't really be any simpler, it's merely just putting the 2x10s in the groove and bolting it all together. Corner braces, simply two bolts, one that goes into the upper rail and one goes in the foot. And really it was strong enough, it didn't even really need the corner braces. So I used one 12 foot long 4x4 to give myself an 8 foot long balance beam. That ends up giving me two 24 inch feet and uh, an 8 foot long balance beam. Then I move on to the table saw. I cut a groove out of the center here, and this is gonna give me a little bit of more rigidity when I put this thing together. I round it over the edges just to give it a little bit nicer look. On the drill press, I counterboard using a forcer bit to allow clearance for the head of the bolt and washer and this way they didn't protrude once I actually bolted these in. Very simple assembly on this, just settle this in and put in two bolts on each end. So now, these obstacles are actually set up in our backyard, and they're all made out of treated lumber, so they'll, they'll last for a good long time. My son's going to enjoy them, play with them, his friends will be able to come over, they'll be able to have a good time and just climb and beat them up. They're built, I mean, I can climb on them and jump all over them, they're, they're built super strong. So they were fun to make, and they're actually very simple to make, even though they're really strong and they're built to last. So I think he's going to have a really good time with them. and I. We've already been playing on them quite a bit and had all sorts of different little races and different things and his friends have come over and raced and, and things like that. So they'll be sitting back here. He'll have good times on them. He'll probably beat himself up a few times, learn a few lessons. It, it'll be all sorts of fun. So I'm excited to have him in our backyard and I just think he's going to enjoy it a whole lot. So I hope you enjoyed watching the video. If you uh, haven't subscribed already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, follow along. There's gonna be quite a few different other things. I, I have a mix of different things on my channel, so there's a lot more to come. Check it out. Hope you enjoyed. God bless.